I spent a month with Bamboo Labs new H2S 3D printer. And this isn't going to be your typical review, there are already plenty of polished reviews out there showing off features, test prints and benchmarks. Instead, I want to share my real experience, what happens when you unbox it and when problems show up, when you have to deal with support and when you are actually trying to use this machine day to day. This printer was purchased by my friend Tim Mac and I had the opportunity to keep it for a month and I'm still broke after buying the H2D by myself. Let's start at the beginning. I do have some unboxing footage and first impressions were excellent. The packaging was solid, the machine looked premium and right away I thought, okay, this feels like a serious flagship printer. Very similar platform to the HTD, just mm, simplified. At first it ran fine, I got around 15 hours of printing and it was pretty good. Unfortunately, those 15 hours turned out to be the only good printing I would get out of this machine. Other than that, things went downhill. Not long after those initial prints, literally on the second day of using the machine, the HTS completely stopped loading filament from the AMS. Here's what would happen. The AMS would push the filament down into the extruder. The gear would try to grab it, and it would just slip. I tried different bamboo spools, even swapped the entire AMS unit, exact same problem. The only way it would load was by bypassing the MS and feeding filament externally. I opened my first support ticket. This is where the long back and forth began. First, support thought it might be the filament sensor. Then they shipped me a brand new extruder motor with the filament sensor included. Replacing that motor was not quick or easy. Unlike the older X1 or P1 series, where most repairs are straightforward, the H2 series requires access from the back of the print head. That means you have to rotate the whole printer multiple times just to get to connectors and cables. And the machine is not light. It's not fun and it feels like the HTS was designed more for factory assembly than for maintenance in real conditions. I carefully installed the new motor, but the AMS issue was still there, so two hours were just wasted. Next, support shipped me a new buffer. That's a part at the back of the printer which provides tension to the filament coming from the AMS. Once I replaced it, the AMS started to load filament again. So if you ever faced this exact issue, the buffer really seemed to be the culprit. And interestingly, just two or three weeks after I received the printer, I started noticing posts on Facebook and Reddit from other people describing similar AMS problems. So looks like it isn't just me, it might actually be a common issue with these machines. Unfortunately, fixing one problem created another. Right after the AMS started working, a brand new ear appeared, extrusion force um, sensor abnormal. And at this point, printing was basically over. Remember, the only good 15 hours of printing happened at the beginning, before the first AMS failure. After that, every attempt ended in errors. Errors or it just mechanically didn't load things, so it just didn't work. Now, to be fair, it's possible the AD sensor broke during my repairs, but I was careful. And honestly, if a sensor this critical can fail so easily during a repair, that's not a good design choice. So I reached out to support again, I explained everything and asked for either a refund or a full replacement unit. Here is what I got back. As your device was delivered more than 7 business days ago, we are unfortunately unable to process a refund. We recommend replacing the nozzle AD sensor. If that doesn't work, then we can consider offering a printer replacement service. They even said a full replacement would take longer and could risk shipping damage, so it was more efficient to just keep replacing parts. And honestly, that response felt like a slap in the face. It wasn't my fault the printer sat broken for weeks while I waited for replies and replacement parts. I had contacted them within 7 days initially. Remember, the printer stopped working on day 2. Keep in mind that return window depends on the region. The only reason time passed was because the machine was sat down the entire time stuck in maintenance and waiting for parts. I tried to argue, since some of my clients were waiting for parts that don't fit on the H2D's smaller print bed and on top of that I needed to print a mold for some of my upcoming videos. 
but support just pointed me to their policies and said they had sent me a new sensor, the problem is they sent the wrong one. I flagged that and then they replied again, this time mentioning the AD sensor specifically. And by the time of this recording, I'm still waiting for that delivery. Now stepping back to the machine itself. The H2S has strong build quality, it shares the same sturdy platform as the HTD, and when it works, the print quality is really good. But the design has problems. Most of the issues are concentrated in the print head, where almost everything is connected with tiny ribbon cables. They're fragile, easy to damage, and they make even basic maintenance unnecessarily stressful. It feels over-engineered, Great for the factory assembly, but terrible for the end user who has to repair or replace parts later. And once you start replacing parts, you see just how fragile the system is. Then there is the support experience. Yes, the team is polite, but polite doesn't get your printer back online when you're waiting days for responses and weeks for replacement parts. That's not fun. Like, at all. In my case, the printer broke on day two. That's early and it makes me think maybe this particular unit just wasn't tested properly before the shipping? Not sure. And finally, let's talk about Bamboo's strategy with the H2 lineup. Look back at the X1C. That was the flagship, later the P1 series came out, but it didn't really take anything away from X1 users. Print volume was the same, speeds were similar, and it felt like a fair split between premium and affordable. The P1 just dropped a few bells and whistles, things you may or may not care about, but at its core it wasn't a downgrade for people who had already invested in the X1 lineup. This time it's different. We bought the flagship HTD, the most expensive printer, and then, just a couple of months later, Bamboo released the H2S, which is cheaper, prints bigger, and prints faster. To give you numbers, the HTD has a slightly smaller build volume, while the H2S comes in about 5% larger overall. When you are maxing out the print bed, that 5% really does make a difference. Print speed is harder to measure, but because the H2S print head is lighter and simpler, you feel it on big jobs. Take something like a helmet, a print that normally takes a full day, could finish two to three hours faster on the H2S. Of course, for multi-material or multi-color jobs, the HTD can still be faster thanks to the dual extruder, but for straight engineering parts, the HTS beats it. And then there is the price. The H2S is almost half the cost of the HTD, so not only do you get bigger and faster, you also spend way less. So instead of serving different audiences, it feels like early adopters of the HTD paid more for less. Honestly, it feels like Bamboo tried to pay off their R&D expenses by pushing the expensive machine first without announcing the rest of the lineup. And only later did they reveal the cheaper version. Then, right after the H2S, they announced the H2C, the tool changer. That's the only time they actually gave a little more insight into what's coming next. But for the HTD, there was no roadmap, no clear picture, and that left early adopters like me feeling blindsided. So here's my takeaway after a month with the H2S. The printer itself is solid when it works. Build quality is there, print quality is good, but the fragile design, the endless back and forth with support and the lack of transparency in Bamboo's strategy left me disappointed. This machine spent more time waiting for parts than actually printing, and while I like the HTS more than HTD for my workflow, I can't ignore the experience I had with support and quality control. I'll try to post an update in a follow-up video or maybe a shorts or maybe a post on YouTube once I know how this story ends overall. Now, would I recommend the HTS? Well, maybe, if you are lucky enough to get a good unit, because when it prints, it's great. But if you are unlucky like me, you'll spend more time troubleshooting than printing, which is not fun. And that is my month with the Bamble Up HTS. If you have had a similar experience, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear if others run into the same issues. 
And if you found this useful, hit those like and subscribe buttons because I've got more builds, projects, and hopefully more working machines coming soon. And thanks for watching.